delighted to be the person introducing um, Dean Groom and Dr. Braun Stuckey. Um, they've been involved in playing since it was just a twinkle in our eyes back in November 2010. So it's very, very exciting to have them here today for the launch. Both, um, both come to us with a wealth of experience in game-based learning. Dean's an educator, a designer, a blogger, a researcher, a writer, a dad. He's got Harry here today. Say hi to Harry. Um, Braun, aka Zena, is our playing game layer designer. And she's also well known for her work in Quest Atlantis. And both of them are leading a fantastic initiative that I know many of you have heard of called Massively Minecraft. And we'll hear a lot more about that today if you go down to the game lab. So, can you welcome onto the stage, please, Dean Groom and Dr. Braun Stuckey? Thanks. I have a laser. <laughs> Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Awesome. Um, so, sorry for the delay at the terminal, but you know, that's what happens with flights. Um, my name's Dean Groom. Um, I say I do a whole range of things. God, I can hardly see anyone at all. Um, I'm kind of shy and a bit special, so I'm going to play a video to start off with um, that's going to set the mood for what I'm going to talk about. So, settle down, get your bags in order. And I'll press this button. Hopefully, those guys at the back have got it working. Originally um, left school and decided to, I should get a job, which is my my father's idea. Um, I was going to be a rock star, but I was rubbish. Um, and I I, um, I became a typographer, so I make no apology for celebrating typography. And now we can animate typography; it's even cooler. Because being a typographer, writing six words in newspaper advertising is actually not that cool. <laughs> It's kind of boring, but anyway, you like it. Um, so yeah, so it's about creating the future. So I'm going to talk a bit about how we're going to achieve that. And if, if I think back to five or six years ago and thought, would I have an entire room full of people giving up a Saturday to come and do this kind of stuff? I'd have gone, nah, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, we had to sort of hold conferences with other titles and then ambush people. But now we're not doing that anymore. You know, there's, no, there's not so much um, terrorism going on on the aircraft. We've actually got our own airline, which is kind of cool. Um, whoops, just let me press a button. Um, so here's the thing, I'm, sort of, I'm, on, I'm on board with the idea. Um, I'm on board with all great ideas, really. Um, but I get bored by bad ideas. Um, and I think that you know, five years ago, something like this would have been, would have been impossible. Um, but if I'm going to be on board with an idea, I'm always going to ask for a seat upgrade, every single time. Does anyone else do that at the airport? Always ask for a seat upgrade. Never get one, but I always ask. 
Um, but at the same time, I'm a kind of person that when I'm doing this sort of stuff, um, I don't really expect someone to bring me drinks. It's nice if there's a button, but I've learned from traveling on airlines that you can press that button all you like, and they still don't turn up when you're really thirsty. Um, so I like to get my own drinks, and I think that people that are turning up today are going to do that. You're actually working on your own careers, your own knowledge, your own professionalism, and, that, and in doing that, working for the kids that you're actually teaching. And I think that's a really big thing. You're giving up a lot of yourselves in order to achieve it. I'm going to talk a bit, a bit more of that shortly. Um, but there are two real things that I want to talk about today. Um, and they're really around this idea of something called in-service learning. And when I first started teaching, people used to say, oh, I'm going to an in-service day. I used to wonder what that meant. And I think that it's been kind of corrupted from what in-service learning is to what should we actually do on those in-service days. My wife's an, uh, an AP at a primary school. Her in-service days appear to be reading policy documents. Um, <laughs> it doesn't appear to be any learning going on whatsoever. Who remembers this? Yeah? It's a year. It's, it's, it's now. It's this week. October the 14th. It's this week. You know? I was promised a hoverboard. Right? And I think that Apple have not lived up to that promise. And I think that what we're doing with technology in our life is amazing. I think what we're doing with it in school um, barely scratches the surface of what kids like this one and these know it can already do. We're using a version of technology that suits us, not them. And it's not your fault. That's just how the system works. I don't think Australia's lagging behind. Um, I don't think teachers in Australia are underperforming or unwilling or you know, somehow trying to sabotage the aircraft so nothing ever takes off. Um, I think the problem is that school was no more designed for the internet than the high street was designed for online shopping. It just wasn't. So we've just got to figure this stuff out. And I think that what you can do is you can work with stuff that we've got so we can create the future and maybe some of these kids can invent hoverboards before I get too bloody old to ride one. Some people like to climb mountains. I like to build planes in the air. I grew up wanting to be on a wing, wanting to be up this high. Sometimes the temperature up at altitude will reach 60 below. It's crisp, it's refreshing. You never know what you're going to come across up here. Canadian geese. Owls. These people back here, that's why I come to work. That's why I build airplanes in the sky. We're not just building a plane here. We're building a dream. I love this job. I do a lot of banks up here. When I look over there and I see that little kid, the look in his eyes, that's all the banks I need. Managing the complexities of the digital economy. Yeah, EDS, who remembers them? Um, that's an old video now, and I, I show you that one because I used to show that video maybe five or six years ago, and I always oh, think that was awesome. Yeah, we're building planes in the sky, we're like doing mad stuff, and we're really changing the world. And then we jump off with parachutes. The problem is, we didn't all have parachutes that opened, and there are kind of like monsters and dragons in the sky that eat us on the way down. So building planes in the sky was a nice metaphor, and it was kind of cool maybe five or six years ago, but that's not what we're doing now. That's not why you're here doing stuff. We're not doing this kind of um, mythical and romantic kind of arguments. We're actually showing you people what you can actually do with real technology. But there are lots of people doing this. Okay? So I'm modeling at the moment the absolute worst possible way of teaching or showing anybody anything, because I'm PowerPointing. And if you follow me on Twitter, you just know how much I love PowerPoint. But it's a convention. To get you there and me here, we have to do PowerPoint. It's like a social contract. Not a nice one, but that's what it is. But there's a lot of teachers that are still thinking, huh, what's going on? What, what am I doing? Um, 
And I think that unless we find the kind of humanity in the technology, we're just going to keep being servants of things like PowerPoint, of Apple, of things where we're told, go and use this, go and do that, don't use this, this one's better, that one's rubbish. And we're going to keep going through this cycle. And the cycle starts because we keep calling it ICT. Information communication technology. It's not about information communication. It hasn't been for a long time. And if we keep calling it that, we're going to keep repeating the same mistakes. So right now, I'm definitely modeling the wrong kind of humanity because I'm PowerPointing you all to death. And probably why some people at the back have already jumped on Twitter and Facebook because I've been monumentally disappointing. You've had to wait half an hour outside and it's just not moving on at a pace you want to keep up with. So you're on Facebook telling people what you think. Um, so what I'd like you all to do now is just get off Twitter, get off Facebook, and log on to World of Warcraft, because that's where we're going to do the rest of the presentation. And there was a deathly silence, yes. Yay! Let me go back in history. 1927, um, Dewey said that what we were going to be doing with all this new modern, fangled, modernist education was a riotous glorification of things as they are. We're doing that right now. We glorify the iPad, we glorify the blogs, the wikis, the technologies that have been glorified for the last five years. I was promised a hoverboard and I got blogs and wikis. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. But I'm not the first person to say it. We've been saying it for a very long time. So what I see things like social media and teachers on there is I think we're doing a protest we're on there because we want to support the idea, but at the same time, we're protesting our own lives, our own kind of inability to move the agenda in the way that we want. And it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of resilience, because nine times out of ten, you're going to get told no. You're going to get Weasley emails that say, sorry, we don't want you anymore. They're not even going to look you in the eye. Technology has this ability to dehumanize things that I think are really important. And when it gets back to using it really well is when I can see a photograph like that on Instagram in real time. I kind of think, humans still exist. That's kind of awesome. And I think we have to ask ourselves constantly, who's benefiting from this school versus technology debate? Kids? No. Teachers? Who? Manufacturers, Manufacturers yeah. We're all drinking that red cordial. Who bought iPhone 5? Oh, no one's going to admit that, because he's going he's to have a go at me if I admit that. Hey, he's got a hat and an iPhone 5. Trailblazer. <laughs> Here's how it works. Let me let you into the dirty little secret of EdTech. Here's how it works. There's traditional stuff. Okay? The traditional stuff has to become the villain. Has to. We've got heroes, new Twitter heroes, new Facebook heroes, new social media heroes, new TED heroes. We need to have a villain. A hero is nothing without a villain. So we call it traditional. We say worksheets are rubbish, photocopies are rubbish, books are rubbish, talking is rubbish. And we come up with new ideas. The profitable stuff is the stuff that you will buy. It's not the stuff you won't buy. We have got kids playing massively Minecraft whose parents, I absolutely guarantee you, are world-renowned speakers on technology reform and change. Lots of them. How many of those parents play Minecraft? None. Their kids do. And I think this is the problem. This is the SAMA model. Has anyone heard of SAMA? Yeah. Yes. It's a very good model. Um, it begins at the bottom and says, if you're going to get into technology, first of all, we're going to do substitution. Then we're going to move on to augmentation, eventually some modification, and finally some redefinition. Um, the little head in the bottom there is because I went to hear the chap talk about it not too long ago. Apparently that takes two years. How long does it take in our house to do something new? A second. A second. It doesn't take two years. The problem is 95% of what we've been told to do lives in that bottom half. We augment when we substitute. Stop using a book, use an e-book. Stop using a laptop, use an iPad. We're staying down the bottom. Very few people are in the top end of town doing that stuff. Because also, 95% of the money lives in those bottom areas. 5% lives in the top area. So if you've got a cracking idea, 
you ain't going to get any money for it. So I think we started making tools that teachers would buy. And I think they ignored the tools that kids use completely. And I think that's been one of the real problems. So it's absolutely fantastic to see kids sit in the audience on a Saturday with everybody else. I think any conference that doesn't do that, not worth going to. Um, for those of you who have got really bored, here's a photo of some great legs on a bike. Um, I used to think that games would save the world, but I've recently discovered bicycles, so I think that maybe bicycles might have something to do with it too. Um, but I do think that tweetability has become more 